Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video guys, we will show you on a Ford with a 3.5 or 3.7 engine, but mostly 3.5 guys. If, if you have a Ford Edge, Fusion, Flex, uh, Taurus, Lincoln, MKS, MKZ, MKX, MKT, I believe, with a 3.5 engine and you have a, a timing chain rattle, Okay, especially on cold engine startup, this is your timing chain tensioner guys. Okay, we're going to explain how to remove and replace that thing. First, I'll recommend to do not just the tensioner, to do the timing chain, the whole kit, chain and tensioner together. But if you, if you decide to be a little bit cheaper and decide to go just with the tensioner for something temporary, stay with us and we'll show you how to do that. It will take a lot of work guys. And we have more than 200 videos on this car and this engine. Please subscribe guys, our mission is to save you as much money as we can. So let's start on it now. All the tools and parts that are used in the video will be listed in the description of the video below. First thing that we'll be using is the socket 732s. I don't know which metric that will be, but this one fits the best on, on the screws that we need to remove. There is one cover that we need to remove underneath with that socket and then we can get to uh, to the drain plug. Okay, so we're under the vehicle now. Okay, one screw is out. Two. Three, four, five. Wear eye protection because dust and mud will fall off the plastic. Okay, this is number six right there. So let's see, we have two clips that we need to remove. You pull the center piece out and then you pull the rest of the clip out. And just one more. Okay, over there. Sometimes they will be really stuck if they have mud in them. So you just want to wiggle them as much as you can. And this clip did break and sometimes they will. Uh, we will have on the channel guys, uh, check out the link to our Amazon store and see where we get our clips from. Okay, so you can get replacement clips for really good price, usually a huge quantity of clips. Okay, now just pull that uh, outer piece and the plastic comes out like that. Okay, so we're underneath on the left side, on the driver's side of the vehicle, that hole right there, that's where the coolant will, come, uh, will start coming out. So we have that bucket ready, so we're going to collect it. Now we need to go ahead and turn uh, the radiator pork, okay, and this one is really hard to see so we'll try our best actually to show you I'm trying to see if I can find an angle where I can show you a little bit better Okay, so I'm under the car now guys Let me show you okay where the drain plug now is okay if you come right here Okay, uh, I'm trying to get the light correct here so I can show you. Okay, you can see this one right here. Okay, this is your drain plug. And this one, you will have to use a socket or an Allen wrench to get it loose. Okay, so you can see we have an offset box wrench, 19 millimeter there, and it works perfectly. So you need to just get it loose, okay? And after that, it starts getting loose by hand pretty easy. So let's do a little bit, you see it's not very tight. 
And you start leaking at one point, so you have to be make uh, you have to make sure that you're not ri right underneath it. After that, you can even try turning it by hand after it gets loose. Uh, it's not very tight. It's uh, initially it's very tight, and after that, it's not. So you start dripping. You have the bucket there. Okay, get it, get it loose all the way. And you can see coolant's coming out. Okay, right there, coolant's coming out. What do you have to do next, guys? You have to open the coolant reservoir. Now, I forgot to mention, drain the coolant only when it's cold. Because if it's cold, it can severely burn you, it can be under pressure, and that could hurt you really, really bad. Once you open the reservoir cap, you start coming out even faster. Do not remove the plug all the way because if you do, it's going to come out of everywhere and you will not be able to collect it. So we'll just let it drain like that for probably about 5 to 10 minutes. You can see the coolant in the reservoir is already dropping here. After that, it will come out of the radiator, the engine as well, so it will take a little bit of time. Okay, so you can see guys, practically it's almost done, probably need another 2-3 minutes, but you can go ahead now, after that part pretty much, close the drain plug, you can close it by hand and then get it tied with the wrench, do not over tighten those because it's plastic, the radiator as well, and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to crack that thing, so be, be careful how you do it, okay, we'll get our tight now. So next, you can see we do not have current anymore in the overflow bottle, we are going to disconnect the hoses here. Uh, so we have that okay, little hose that we need to disconnect on top. So we need to okay, grab that clamp, gently pull it out, do not twist here because you are going to break it. Okay, even though it has a metal sleeve inside of it, those are known to be easy to crack. Now we have the big one on the bottom, which is a little bit hard to get to. And uh, we can actually remove it in a little bit after we get the screws out of the way. That way it can move a little bit. We have the 8mm socket here now. That's what we're using. Okay, this one is out. Now, we just have two more to remove. Okay, now working on the second one there, on the third one, excuse me, second on the, on that side. Okay, now we can move it a little bit and twist it so we can get to that clamp now. So let's see if we can reach it a little bit easier now. Okay, if I turn it this way. Okay, almost came out and now we need to move just a little bit more down. It's a little bit inconvenient place. Okay, we call it now. Perfect. This one came out, you can see the bracket is off. 
on the clamp, excuse me, now just twist the holes left and right a little bit. Okay, and pull the overflow bottle out of the way. So next we need to uh, jack the front right side of the vehicle up. And uh, by doing that we need to remove the wheel. Okay, now you can remove the fender liner, the whole fender liner. Or uh, what we will try to do, just remove a few clips so we can fold it and actually access the crankshaft. Okay, first to align everything, but uh, I would recommend just to go ahead and remove the whole fender liner so it's not in the way. Okay, let's see if those clips sometimes will not come out. If they're stuck really bad, use that spray guys, this thing is amazing, one of the best sprays on the market. Uh, I'll just go ahead and spray a little bit, okay, on the clip. Okay, where they get in each other. A little bit on this one here. Okay, let's see if they're going to come out now. Perfect, watch now, otherwise you're going to break those guys. Because they get stuck so bad. If they still don't come out, just move them a little bit and spray so we can penetrate on the inside. But, <laughs> check out. This thing is, I'm telling you, this is the best penetrating spray in uh, Interform, right here, Thin Super, check it out, it's a multi-purpose spray that will be listed in the description of the video below. So this is a 732 socket. Okay, underneath we have a, a screw that we need to remove, three of them actually, two, two of them. Okay, we need to remove those two, two screws. After that, we need to come with the same two and start removing here as well. Okay, ours, this one is broken there, you can see, so we remove it, but... Some on the back side here. Now the clips guys, okay those clips if they get stuck, check out how easy those things come out. We use special spray, lubricating penetrating spray. So we'll show you what it is on the next clips. You need to pull the center piece out and then pull the whole clip as well. Now check out, I'm talking about these clips right here. If you try to pull them out, usually, okay they will break. So if you use some interphone spray, check it out in the description of the video. This is the best uh, spray that we, we've used, European formula here. Okay, really, really good one. So I'm going to just spray a little bit on the clips. Okay, this one here as well. Okay, and you can see how easy they come out. Try to spray between both pieces. That way it can penetrate. Okay, check this thing out now. Without the spray, you're going to break it. Okay, and if you spray a little bit of spray, just one second guys, and that thing is amazing, I'm telling you. This is the best thing that we purchased for our shop to save us a little bit time on labor and parts. Okay, right here we have one more that I forgot to spray. Okay, the one down there now. Perfect. Right here we have one more. One more screw that we need to remove. And here we have one more clip towards the top. Okay, this one is not gonna come out, so let's just apply a little bit of spray between both parts. Okay, perfect. Let's see now. You can see it came out. Let's see if anything else is holding now. I think we should be able to pull it out. Let's 
So, okay, check out all the stuff that came out here. The dirt. Uh, I don't know, whatever else. It's been stuck there during the years. So, underneath, it looks like we have one more clip. Okay, right there. In the corner. So, this clip is down there. Always, always use jack stand and throw the tire under the vehicle so if something goes terribly wrong it's not going to smash you underneath okay perfect this one came out now so i don't think anything else is holding that fender line liner let's uh, let's check it out now Whoa. i think we have enough to plant a few a few trees here check it out Some here on the front as well. Okay, that piece came out, guys, just like that. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to drain the oil, engine oil. Uh, that way we can make sure that uh, everything's prepared for later. So drain plug right there. Okay, we'll. Drain it and see uh, how much we're going to get out now. We need to have a big container on the bottom. So it came loose now. We're going to drain it. Always inspect your oil plug as well, guys, every time. Seals and all that stuff when you remove it. So we'll let it drain and we'll continue. So we'll just install the oil plug, we don't need it anymore. Uh, we drain the oil. So what do you need to do first guys? Okay, right here you can see this is the MUF sensor that we'll need to disconnect <coughs> so we can lift that thing up. There is one red thing on the bottom, okay, you need to slide it back, then press down here, okay, and disconnect the sensor. Now you can see this is the safety lock that we need to pull, otherwise it's not going to work. When it's locked it's like uh, going forward, so you need to push back, then press down, okay, right here. It's going to activate that clip and you pull it out. We need to remove the air filter box, okay, open it on this side, slide it towards the left, pull it up a little bit. After that, we need to get a Okay, we need to get a screwdriver. Okay, we need to get one hose clamp loose. Okay, back there, this clamp right here. Okay, we uh, will be using a flat screwdriver now. Flathead screwdriver. All the tools, guys, and parts that we use will be listed in the description of the video below for your convenience. So get it loose, make sure it's loose enough, otherwise you can damage your intake boot. Okay. And now we need to disconnect that hose right here. Check this thing out now, how you do that. Okay, you need to come on this side, like that. Okay, and pull it out. Okay, like that. So this is, guys, the cover that came out of it. Now we need to proceed with the next step. Okay, so after that, we forgot to mention there is one more hose right here. Just pull it out, this is for the booster, and you can go ahead and pull the whole thing out of there and we can proceed with the next step now. So, we need to find a socket now, okay, that's going to fit the throttle body bolts. And uh, you can see now right here, okay, we have one bolt here, one, two, then we have three here, four bolts that we need to remove with eight millimeter socket. And uh, after that we need to see there is one bolt underneath I believe so we're going to check in just a second to see if we need to do anything there so 8 millimeter socket remove these four bolts okay perfect now Uh, 
Okay, this is the bowl there. Second, third. We have a video how to clean throttle body as well. Check it out. It can improve your fuel economy and get rid of engine light codes and also improve the vehicle performance. Okay, now we need to pull it down. Okay, that connector here, you can see that safety pin, the red one needs to come up like that and after that you need to press down right here. Okay, and just pull it out. By pressing down there, okay, you can see you release the clip. Sometimes if it's stuck, you need to push the whole clip in, then press in, then pull it out. Okay, just like that. So now with the throttle body out of the way, you can see that bracket right there, this is with 8mm socket, this thing needs to go. Okay, perfect. This one is out. Now, <clears throat> we need to get a plastic, tool, uh, plastic uh, clip removal tool, okay, and we need to pull Okay, or you have two options. You can pull the hoses out or you can go ahead and pull those holders here and just pull them to the side. We'll just leave ours like that. Okay, right here. Okay guys, that thing that you see here, that's mouse poop or what it looks like. Yep. So, uh, <coughs> we'll be replacing that cover on the back as well. You, you can see the vehicle was on the farm, so probably mouse got in the engine compartment one time and they Decided to poop on top of the engine. So now with the 8mm socket we have a few more bolts that we need to start disconnecting now. Okay, and those will be pretty pretty tight. One, two, three, four on this side, five, six so far. So <coughs> Let's go ahead and get them loose. Every time you remove throttle body or intake, it's recommended to replace the gasket there. Okay, go ahead and remove the bolts. Perfect, now. Okay, grab the intake, upper intake manifold. Okay, and pull it out. Now we need to see that that hose needs to be disconnected right there. So this one you press in on the yellow part. Okay, and pull it out. Press in there on that yellow part. Okay, let me show you again. This thing, you need to just press in and pull the hose out. Okay, and let's see if we have anything else. There is one more hose there holding, but we can pull that thing out a little bit until we can reach it. This hose is for the vacuum. Okay, this one. Okay, right there. Okay, so let's see if we can get to it with the pliers so we can remove that clamp. Okay, now what we have to do, grab that hose, twist it off and pull it out. And this one will be stuck. Okay, really bad sometimes. Okay, I just disconnected it. I pulled it out. Now it's important not to drop anything in the intake, lower intake holes there, because it will go in the valves. Okay, so you have to be extremely, extremely careful. Now on the back side, there is one more breather hose that we need to disconnect. Okay, you can see right there. You cannot reach those. This one actually, I think ours came out of the valve cover. We'll check in just a second and see <coughs> how it attaches. So we know guys what to expect as well. Okay, right here we're supposed to have one more bolt and somebody didn't install it last time. Check this thing out. Okay, there is one more bolt here holding and ours was not installed. Okay, you can see that, okay, that metal bracket right there, that's where the bolt goes. So. Whoever worked on it last time just totally forgot this bolt. 
So there is one more wire on the back side that we need to disconnect. Okay, this one right there. Okay, and the upper intake manifold came out. Let me show you, this is the wire now. Okay, you need to press down right here. Pull it out. That's where the breather hose connects. Okay, right here. And also this is the bracket, okay, for the intake manifold. Now we are going to cover the hose here so we don't drop anything in them. So you can see that hose here, okay, that tooth. Just get it out of here like that and it will disconnect the holes, pull it out. Now we'll need to get 8 millimeter socket, okay, to remove the ignition coils. Okay, actually, this one's been replaced. One of the bolts, this, this bolt has been replaced. Somebody worked on it and they installed the wrong bolt. So it's supposed to be eight, but in our case, one of them is probably a seven. So we'll check in a second and see. I'll grab the bolts, okay, so we don't lose them because those are super easy to lose. Okay, yep, this is a seven millimeter there. Perfect. Now, how you disconnect them, you can see that red thing, guys, on every ignition coil, you need to push back. Okay, this is the safety lock, then push down here and pull the wire out. Perfect. They do get stuck a little bit, so you need to wiggle them out of the way. Now you can go ahead and remove them. Those ignition coils are replaceable even if you need to switch them from a different cylinder. It doesn't matter in which order you install them later. Perfect, this one, the seal came out, so we need to install it on the coil. Okay, great. Okay, now the rear ones, you will need to use a ratchet. We'll not be able to get our little impact there to save us a little bit of time. And uh, pretty much we'll need to do the same thing. Okay, we'll need to get the bolts out. Perfect, and uh, then we'll need to disconnect the wiring harness as well. So the same thing, just push the red thing out of the way, press down. And those things are super, super tight. Okay, one came out, one on the other side. So just one left here, perfect. And remove the bolts. Careful not to drop them anywhere. It's important to cover your in, uh, lower intake manifold because otherwise you can drop something in the cylinders, in the valves. Okay, pull those out. Okay, just like that. Just one more to go. Okay, this guy is stuck a little bit there. I don't think they've ever been removed, to be honest with you. From what it seems like, especially the rear ones. The front ones might have been removed, the rear ones not. Okay, out. So next, uh, we'll need to remove valve covers, so we have uh, quite a bit of disassembly to do that. Uh, we'll start with the front one now. Okay, we need to clear all the wiring harness, pull the dipstick out. You can see because it's on the, it's actually on the cover, on the valve cover on top. We'll need to disconnect the, uh, okay, the uh, camshaft sensors here. So press in, pull out. Now, okay, perfect, this one is out. We have one more on the back side, which is very inconvenient to reach there. With the camera, so let me unhook this one and I'll show you. Okay, we have it disconnected. Okay, so that's good. Now, on the back side, okay, you can see 
Right here we have the uh, wiring harness for the this is for the oxygen sensor, okay, bank one, sensor one, I believe, oh, sensor two will be this one. So we need to disconnect this one because it will be in the way as well. So we have this one disconnected uh, right here. There is, okay, let's flip it a little bit sideways because we're trying to get more light. Right here, there is one tooth. Okay, this tooth, press down on it and disconnect it, pretty simple. Uh, after that, you can see right here we have another one. Okay, disconnect this one now. And next, we need to disconnect the wiring harness from this boat. One over here as well. Okay, perfect. And let's see what else is in the way. Here you have to disconnect, uh, you can see the wiring harness from right here. Our clamp is broken so we need to replace this one, that's how we got the car. And uh, let's see if we have anything else holding there. So now with the, uh, with the 10 millimeter socket we'll start removing the bolt. We have the torque specs on the channel guys. So check it out later for torque specs. Perfect. We have on the front now. Two more. Okay, this one, we need to catch it good because it's not too damaged. One more in this corner right here. Okay, let's see if that valve cover will come off or anything else is holding, but let's do the rear one quick too so we can remove both of them at the same time and not get oil everywhere. So unfortunately the rear ones we have to do by hand because we cannot get the impact, it's not short enough. Even though this is a great, great impact guys, it's been abused so much at the shop and we've been using it for 5 years now I think, 4 or 5, it works great. So check it out, it, it will be listed in the description of the video below, something that I would definitely recommend. Okay, you can see we are getting two of them. After that, third one there. Okay. It will, take, it will take a little bit of time, so but I want to show you where all the bolts are, that way you know what to expect. Okay, one more in this corner here, and then we have the one on the downside and one on the side. So you can see, usually once you get those loose, they start going by hand. So pretty much what you see on the front cover, you have the same thing on the back cover as well. Not much different.
Okay, let's see how many more. And I think after that we just have one more back there and one on the side. So uh, once we remove them, okay, I'm going to show you on each valve cover where to expect all the bolts. That way you know, because it's, a, it's practically impossible to stick the camera back there and show you how to do it. On that one there you might need to use extension because uh, you have the engine hook there, the one that you uh, chain up the engine if you need to pull it out. So that's what we're using for ours. We have timing chain videos, all kind of stuff on this thing guys, so please, please subscribe to the channel now. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually get them loose, if they're going to pop up, or the silicone gasket will be stuck really bad, so... You have to make sure that if you, uh, if you pry on it, you don't crack anything or damage anything, so you have to do that only on a spot that it's made to Okay, to be pried a little bit. Okay, just very gently so you don't damage anything. It came loose a little bit, you can see that it's moving. The gasket might be stuck. Okay, maybe a little bit on this side here. If we come and try to pry it a little bit. Okay, all we have left now is on this side, right here. Keep in mind that it goes in the camshaft sensors as well, so <clears throat> that gasket okay, will be stuck a little bit. Now, let's see if we can start pulling that thing out. Okay, came out of there. Now we need to lift it up a little bit. Okay. You might leak some oil as well, so be careful. Okay guys, and this is the front valve cover out of the way now. So let's do the rear one now. Okay, again it will be stuck where uh, that camshaft position sensor is located. So it's a good thing guys that you watched the video because we just found one hidden bolt there, okay. And uh, it's right by the camshaft position sensor. It's really hard to see, so pretty much it has like double bolts there, so. Make sure you get this one loose as well. Okay, now we need to start pulling it. This, this time it should come out. Just wiggle it a little bit, it will be stuck in the sensor. We applied a little bit of lubricating spray so it can slide out of it. Okay, it's almost out. Perfect. So, let us show you now where all the bolts are. Okay, now this is the rear one. This is the front gas uh, cover. Right here. So. If you look at them, 
the rear one has one extra bolt, this one that we didn't know of. So all together on the back one, on the rear one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And on the front one you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, looks like this one has eleven as well. Let me double check everything. Yep, because this one has the side bolt here and this one is behind the uh, behind actually the camshaft position sensor. So both uh, valve covers are out of the car now. Every time you remove them, I recommend to put new gaskets, the whole kit, including the spark plug holes and the uh, variable uh, valve timing solenoid holes as well. Now we need to get a wood block, the jack itself, and we're going to go ahead and support the engine on the bottom, okay, with a wood block on the oil pan. Okay, right there. We'll need to pump it a couple times. Okay, that's it. So that thing should have no, okay. That way we shouldn't have any, any weight on the engine mount. Now we'll need to start removing a few bolts now and uh, we'll be able to pull that thing out. So we're going to spray now. Okay, this bolt right here, that bolt. So we can go ahead and remove that uh, 13 millimeter nut. Now we'll need to get a deep socket. Okay, because you can see this is a pretty long, long bolt there. And this one will be probably pretty, pretty tight too. Okay, came loose. Now one more bolt next to it. So we'll get a little wind pack. Okay, one nut out. Now one bolt. We can pull that plate up. Hopefully. Let's see if it's going to come up or not. Oh, it's going to go in with the engine mount at the same time, I think. We'll be able to pull it out with the engine mount in just a little bit. So now we're going to get a 15 millimeter socket and Okay, we'll remove three nuts. Four nuts, excuse me, four. Okay, and there is one more towards the back. So I will explain where each one of them is just in a second. Okay, let me show you now where they are, so you can see. One, two, three, and the one under the thing, four, right there. Okay, on the last one, you have to be careful that the engine doesn't start dropping. If it does, you need to jack it up a little bit. Okay, so be careful on the last one now. Okay, everything's good in our case. So, now, you can see right here, we have two bolts, and we have one like that towards the back, okay, over there, that we need to remove. 
So all together three bolts, two here and one back there. So those are with 18 millimeter socket. Okay, this one we have to get extension because I, I think that thing is pretty pretty tight to be honest with you. So we'll get the breaker bar here and see if that big tool will help. Okay, perfect one. Start coming loose. Now the second one here. Perfect, now we have one more towards the back. So let's see which way we are going to get to this one now. Okay, we'll need to go on the other side of the hose. So we'll see if we can get an extra extension to come up so it's not uh, that hose is not in the way. You have to be careful when you work with all these extensions so something doesn't snap. So let's get the gloves because you can seriously hear yourself. Okay, things are really really tight on this car. Okay. Came loose. Now we can just go ahead and try to reach. Okay, one came out. Okay, that impact guys, little bitty thing, but that's pretty powerful for being so little and it's very handy so you don't have to turn everything by hand all the time. So, this is the bolt, it has thread locker on it, that's why they don't come off so easy, you can see that blue thing, that's thread locker. Okay, so this one still extremely, extremely tight. Okay, perfect. Now, let's see if we can pull that metal bracket up. Okay, what I'll do, okay, hold on a second, I'll just pump the engine a little bit up, okay, but it released. Otherwise, you can pump the engine just a little bit up and it will come up. Now, we can grab that mount, guys, okay, and pull it out of here. So, now, guys. Right here you can see that bracket, that bracket will need to be removed. Okay, let me just remove that thing because it uh, messes with the light. Okay, we have one bolt here. Okay, 
We have one towards the back. Okay, right there. And one underneath. So we have all together three bolts that we'll need to remove. And this one is 15 millimeter. So, okay, okay, 15 millimeter. We're going to hold the engine now a little bit. You have to support it with one hand or somebody holding it. Okay, wow, one person is getting them loose. So, you can see we got one loose already. So, we'll, what we'll do actually, we'll remove one of them. Okay, after that we'll need to jack the engine up a little bit. Uh, so we can reach the other bolts. But the one that we can reach on the front, okay, we're going to go ahead and remove it now. All the way. So this is it, you can see one of the bolts is coming out. Pretty long bolt, very long bolt by the way. Okay now we need to jack the engine up probably a little bit even more now. Okay so we can reach the other the other bolt. So we jack the engine a little bit up and now we're removing that bolt towards the back here. So it's almost out, you can see guys, those are extremely long bolts and uh, really hard to get to sometimes. Okay, and this is the second bolt. Okay, this one is a little bit shorter as you can see. Now we have one more underneath right here that we'll see if we can reach from here or we need to drop the engine and reach through the rail, okay, on the bottom. So this is guys the third bolt. Okay, we got it loose, but we cannot pull it this way. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring the engine down a little bit. Okay, you have to be extremely careful. Make sure that there is nobody underneath. Make sure you don't damage anything. Just go slow. Okay, and once the engine drops, okay, we'll be able, if we can, pull that bolt out now. Okay, you can see where it is right there. So if I lift the engine mount up. Okay, let's see if we can pull it out. What else is holding here now? Just a little bit more down. Probably we need to go down. Okay, you can see where the boat is. So let me see if I can just pull okay, the engine down just uh, here, more. Okay, let's try now. It went down just a little bit, so... Okay, perfect. You can see that bolt actually. I think it's made that way, or ours is made that way, I don't know. If somebody worked on it. Uh, but it's cut right here, so it can come out a little bit easy that way. Now, what I'll do, I'll just jack it up. Okay, we need to go ahead and jack the engine up again. Okay, you always have to make sure that your jack is good. Okay, on the open with a wood block, everything's good there, so... We will lift it up. Okay, um, and this is that engine mount bracket right here out of the way. So you can see how much room we're gaining so far. So we'll place that ratchet, okay, in the hole right there. Go clockwise while you're doing that. Okay, one person needs to go ahead and release the belt, okay, from the AC compressor or the, okay, or the crank pulley. Doesn't matter which one, never stick your fingers between the belt and the pulley itself. 
okay because you can severely smash your finger guys okay so I just need to do the one on top here a little bit because I couldn't release it all the way it's practically loose but we need to just go a little bit more on the tensioner so let's see if we can pull it out it's very limited room if you cannot place a okay let's get it in again if you cannot place a ratchet in the tensioner I'll explain what needs to be done guys okay let's go again okay and I need to pull it on the bottom okay came off the AC compressor here you can see okay now the only thing holding here I need to in our case I need to move the engine down just a little bit okay because the belt gets smashed between the okay the frame and the engine there so now okay the belt dropped on the bottom now <coughs> we're going to remove okay three bolts with eight millimeter offset box wrench So let's see if those things will start going by hand or they will not. Okay, this one is going. Let me see if I can. Okay, start those here. And just the one on the bottom is holding a little bit. Okay, let me see how tight that thing is now. Okay, it tries to go by hand, but it doesn't. It's pretty tight bolt. So still catching a little bit here and there. I wonder if we can okay move the tensioner a little bit so it's not hanging on it. So we're ready guys to go ahead and remove that bolt now. Finally it's going by hand, then it stops. It's a little bit inconvenient place for that bolt. Hopefully the other ones don't go like that because it's really a pain. <coughs> the way that engine is designed is just no fun to work on. It's one of the, I think it's like top 10 reliable engines ever built but if you have to do some work on that thing it's no fun guys so you can see how long the bolt is okay like that so let me go ahead okay and i'll grab and remove this one here quick okay so all those will come out and we just have one more after that for the tensioner so let's see if it's going to come out
Okay. Almost out. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and grab the tensioner and pull it out. This is it, guys. Okay, guys. So what we've been doing here so far on the power steering pump is removed. Uh, you have a special tool that you have to use to release the belt, guys. Okay, to release the power steering belt and to install it. We don't have the tool, so we'll see if we can do it without the tool. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to order it. Uh, but there is three bolts on the power steering pump. Okay, those three bolts there on the back side of the engine. Two on the bottom, one on top. So we had to remove it so we can go ahead actually, okay, and remove the uh, the cover here, you can see the timing cover as well. Next we'll bring the engine down and why we do that so we can actually, uh, okay, let me see, I need to move the power steering pump out of the way a little bit, okay, to make sure that we are not, okay, catching it, we'll bring it down more, okay, perfect, like that, like that. Okay, that's enough. And we should be able to go ahead and get the crankshaft pulley removed now. All we need is a little compressor, guys. That Dewalt, it's amazing because it goes to 165 PSI. You can find this one listed in the description of the video below. Next, right here, we have the impact. Okay, 18 millimeter socket. And now, if it doesn't wanna, okay, let me explain it. If it doesn't wanna get loose, okay, what you can do, Try to get it on tightened and hit it for a couple of seconds, only two seconds, and then start getting it loose again. So let's see if ours will have a hard time coming off now. No, not at all. You can see with that little bitty too, okay, it came out pretty, pretty easy. So let's go ahead and see if that harmonic balancer is going to come out or we have to do anything special like a pour or anything like that, okay, to pull it out. So, I'll spray some penetrating spray now right here between the, okay, crankshaft and the pulley. Okay, like that, let it soak for a few minutes and see if it's going to come off or we'll need to get our pour and start getting that thing out. So, we'll get the bolt now, guys. Okay, we're going to install it on the pulley. Just get it tied a little bit by hand, okay? You probably want to get about five revolutions at least. We'll get the puller here, okay, and see if that is heavy duty enough, otherwise we have to find a bigger one. Okay, to remove that thing now. So let's go ahead and see how it's going to fit there. And now we need to just get it tight. Okay, let me see this one. It looks like it's a... Probably... 13... 12, let's see what size it is. Okay, perfect. It's uh, staying there now. Okay, so... Okay, this one's too big. So most likely, okay, need to find a socket somewhere. 12, let me see if 12 is too. Yep, yep, it's 30, 13 millimeter. Okay, right there. With a little impact now, okay, let's see if it's going to take it off. You have to go slowly. doesn't come off okay hop it is it is coming out okay a little bit so now we're going to get it loose and what we'll do we'll get the bolt tied on a little bit
Okay. Uh, get the bolt loose actually, my bad. If we get the bolt loose, a couple of revolutions, but you have to make sure that you have enough thread screwed in. Otherwise, okay, what's going to happen? Uh, you're going to strip the thread on the crankshaft and you're, you're guys in big trouble. So we got a socket actually, okay, with, uh, with adapter here. And that way, okay, we can place that socket here inside, okay. And we're going to install the puller inside of the socket. Okay, we need to get it a little bit loose. That way, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be scared about the thread, about the bolt, about damaging anything. We'll start getting it tight now. Okay, and let's see now. came out guys okay you can see like that that way it centers itself okay and it comes out super nice okay and easy you can see just like that so now next step okay this time in cover guys okay you can see we're going to start removing bolts so we're going to remove three four five six seven eight nine bolts that we can reach from here now and then we're going to go to the top and remove more so that's what we'll be doing next we'll just go ahead and remove them and uh, make sure you stand till the end once we remove the timing cover I'm going to share with you where all the specific bolts are okay right here as you know this one we already removed it uh, however we just installed it with two bolts while we were storing the vehicle and waiting for parts so we can just uh, make sure that nothing drops inside so now we're on top guys okay more bolts to remove okay let me see now one here you have two right here you have two like that on the back side we have to disconnect the uh, ground wires it's very important to install your ground wires later because if you don't okay your engine might not work might not even start So all together you have three ground wires that you need to take care of. Okay, this is it right there. Now we'll remove uh, more bolts and we'll show you where things are next. So here now, on top, we're ready to remove. Okay, a few more. Okay, and those actually we might not even need to remove them from what I can see. Okay, these two, they can stay on. I just realized that. But we'll just get them out. Because you can see on the back, they don't go all the way through the cover. Okay, those are long ones. So they definitely need to go. And just two more. Perfect, now the timing cover guys is really stuck to the engine box and the cylinder head because all that is silicone so later all that will need to be clean and we need to reseal it. Now we're going to see if anything else is holding and from what it seems like I don't think okay, anything else is holding just to make sure we don't have a hidden bolt here and there. And if we stick a screwdriver somewhere between the two pieces but you have to be extremely careful not to crack or damage or scratch anything we should be able to pull the two pieces out.
Okay, so this this end started coming loose. Now we'll try this one a little bit here. So we need to pry just a little bit more. You have to be careful. You can see right here where we stick the screwdriver a little bit. So we'll get a little bit of a smaller screwdriver that we can fit in. Okay, let's see if anything else is holding somewhere. Because that would be a lot of silicone too, guys. A lot of silicone to remove. Okay, so you can see, guys, how much silicone came out. And now would be a good thing to get to the parts store, guys eBay something because we just cracked ours as you can see right here and it's still not coming out quite a bit on the bottom it cracked okay and it's still holding so that's why you have to be extremely careful we weren't in our case we could have skipped that step and show you that everything's fine but it's not in our case so better know what could happen guys okay so you know what to what you can avoid So the bottom piece, okay, is the one that is holding more and we will explain why in just a minute when we get everything out. This is due to the fact, okay let me get it with my hands here. Okay, due to the fact that there is glides metal glides that go in it okay you can see that metal glide right there one there and one on the other side well just one one that was holding guys and we cracked our cover because of that thing so let's go ahead and see if we can pull that thing out now we're hitting a little bit here on the holes so I might need to go down maybe a little bit down with the engine so we're not hitting the hole so much. Okay, let me just gently go down. And now maybe we need to go up. We'll see in a second. So we'll remove the nut here for the power steering reservoir. See if we can pull it up a little bit. Okay, there is one more nut. And if we can relocate it towards uh, the side a little bit. We can see if we can pull that piece out now. Okay, we have to be extremely careful because we already broke enough things. So this is the piece guys, right here, it's supposed to come in one piece, but in our case it came in two. Okay guys, so I want to clarify something before we continue. Uh, so what we did guys now, okay, in order for the timing chain not to jump, okay, when you remove the tensioner and have everything set to continue, you have to bring the engine to TDC point, top dead center, and you need to install these special tools on your camshaft. This is for one of the heads, the other two is for the other head. They're exactly the same. Once you install those on the camshafts, guys, unfortunately, we have put it together now. Okay, we're going to install one here, one on the other one. And when you remove the tensioner, the timing will not jump at all. However, guys, in our case, we'll be removing the cylinder head because we need to remove, uh, replace the cylinder head and what we will do, we will bring the pistons in the middle of the cylinder box somewhere. Okay, we're going to test to make sure that they're in the middle because later, okay, when we remove the head, we want to make sure that we don't bend a valve or anything like that. But the correct way, if you're just doing a timing chain replacement, water pump, tensioner or anything like that will be, guys, just to install those tools and you don't need to worry about smashing valves, about uh, jumping timing chain, and hitting the valve so that's how it's supposed to be done guys but we will do it the other way so 
We just wanted to clarify that. So with 8 millimeter now, we are going to remove one of the bolts for the tensioner. Okay, and when we do that, it might be spring loaded, so keep your fingers out of the way. Okay, because what could happen, okay, it can shoot a little bit. Always uh, wear eye protection as well. Okay, one out, just one more on the other side now. It's very limited room guys, we're trying our best to get the best view we can so we can show you things, sometimes it's really really hard to. Okay, perfect. All we have to do, grab the tensioner now. Okay, and pull it out. Okay, you can see the whole thing came out like that. It's oil filled because it's hydraulic tensioner. So this is guys the timing chain tensioner, okay right here, you can see finally got it out. Now, uh, what you guys have to do, uh, get a new one, okay, if you have that timing chain rattle noise, I would recommend to replace the timing chain as well, not just the timing chain tensioner, because if uh, the tensioner failed, maybe the chain will be failing as well too soon. So how you guys can press those if you need to, okay, you need to, okay, turn that thing this way, push it in, Okay, and then lock it and here you need to insert the pin. The pin will hold it and you can install it. Okay. Uh, but if you guys got to that point, put a new chain as well. Now from that point on guys, uh, uh, find the other video that will be, doing the, uh, will be doing the timing marks, installing the timing chain and all that stuff because as I mentioned, every time guys you get that tensioner out, okay, what could happen? Okay, jump the timing chain and as a result guys, you can damage your engine. So I would recommend to set the timing every time you do a timing, a timing tensioner replacement. So thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe and see you guys next time.